a star Makes you what you are It gives you the road That leads you near or far Try changing your life It's already planned Watch all of your dreams slip right through your hands Where can you go when destiny takes you? Follow your star, see what it makes you Just let the world drift by and watch the changing sky Find out who you are, born beneath the star. It's payday, Miss Roberts. Landlord? Client. Hello, darling. You put on weight. So have you. We're older. A hundred years old. Older and poorer. What a very grey room. What do you want, Danielle? To see you? Ha! <laughs> You're right, of course. No, I want your help. Like you just said, older and poorer. I don't want money. What then? This, John Smith, private investigation. Husband trouble? How did you get? I was your husband once, remember? You were never any trouble. Perhaps I should have been. Well, tell me all about it. Name, address, and what do you want me to do? Nathaniel Dunning, 18 Belgrave Avenue. Well? Oh, well, I thought you'd tell me. That's why I came. Do you want him followed? That's right. I want him followed. Do you have reason to believe that your husband is conducting an extramarital relationship? <laughs> I'm sorry, John, but you did sound pompous. So tell me. What's to tell? He's having an affair. How do you know? Show me the wife who doesn't know when her husband's having an affair. Cool toward you? He jumps a mile whenever I go anywhere near him. Anyway, I know who it is. That's a help. Name? Allworthy. She the only one? Her name's Peter. She's a he. That's right. My husband is playing fast and loose with another man. They have cozy little dinners together whenever I'm out of town. Where? At home. My home. How do you know? I've spied on them. That's the level he's dragged me down to, John. And now you want me to spy on him? I want you to do whatever you have to do so that I can pin him down to giving me a divorce. And a whopping great settlement. When are you next going out of town? Today. Well, Mother's going to Spain for a couple of weeks. I thought I'd go with her. How is Mother? The same. Kitty. Do you think your husband will be... Uh... Entertaining tonight? Well, if he isn't, it'll be the first time he's missed. You got a photograph? Of my husband? Hmm. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Does it matter? Not really. Where does he work? Those government offices at the corner of Parliament Square.
Here are the papers, sir. What papers? Mr. Dunning, room 43. No Dunning here. This is room 43. That may be, but no Dunning. This is my office. My name is Ryman. Now, if you'll excuse me. I'll leave them here anyway. Oh, no, you don't. The last time somebody delivered me a file by mistake, it took me five weeks to get rid of it. Dunning, what's his room number? Thank you. He's in room 28. It's just along the corridor. They distinctly told me room 43. They also said Dunning, and he is in room 28. I want you to pick up my camera for me. Why do you want to be in such a hurry? I want to take some photographs. Oh, Mr. Smith, not those kind of photographs. Yes, Miss Roberts. Those kind of photographs. Thank God you've come. And they do something. What do you suggest? I call the police and they send me a club. Police? Dunning. I think I'm going to be sick again. Found in here. Look what I found in here. Have you found him yet? Who? You know who. 
Oh, your mysterious third party. That's right. Uh, what did you say his name was again? I didn't. No, no of course not. Well, not to worry too much. If he exists, we'll find him. He exists. Uh, you're not eating, son. I've lost my appetite. Uh, I'm not surprised. It's a messy business. Your ex-wife has disappeared, too. What do you want with her? Well, you said it was she who put you on to following her husband. Well? I just want to hear it from her, that's all. Find her and you will. Uh, you said she'd gone to Spain. That's what she told me. Uh. Well, good night, son. When can I go? You've just got to be joking. Good night. morning tea. You give me any of your lip and I'll clobber you. All right. Sign here. You're a very lucky man, Smith. I take it you found him. Don't come back with me. You cloak and dagger fellows think you can get away with whatever you like. But I'm telling you, if our paths cross again, you just look out. I'll jump on you so hard, I'll break your back. work for you anymore, remember? I didn't want to let you go. You don't want to let anyone go. Unless it's feet first. Yes, but I did let you. Look, Max, all this was five years ago. It's long dead and forgotten. Yes, well, you're in trouble with the law, old chap. You should know. You've got me out. Yes, and I had to pull some very well-connected strings. Why? In fact, for a couple of hours last night, I didn't think I'd be able to succeed. Why? I want that notebook. What notebook? Oh, come now. We're professionals, John. You can fool some of the people all of the time, but you can fool a professional hardly any of the time. I'm not trying to fool anyone. Well, then why don't you hand over the notebook like a good chap and we'll say no more about it. What if I don't? Oh, don't say that, John. I told you. I had to pull some very well-connected strings. If I let you have the notebook, I'm clean. If I don't, I go back to the police, right? Yes, that's about it. Just say I do let you have the notebook. Who gets nailed for killing Dunning? What do you care, so long as it isn't you? Then I'd better let you have it. Oh, now there's a good fellow. Just let me know where it is, and I'll have it picked up. Hmm, can't do that. I must pick it up myself. So be it. When can I expect you? When you see me. Oh, uh, it's not like you, John. All that blood. Messy job. Not like you at all. <laughs> I like to kill people. <laughs> You, if you'll give me half a chance. I had visitors last night, and they wanted to know if you'd left anything here. Like what? Like an overnight bag. You're my overnight bag. Oh. 
No. No. John? No, please. John. No, I don't want to. John, wake up. I had to shoot. All right now? Bad dream. My past ring is ugly head. Tell me about it. If you want to. What time is it? One thirty. Make me some tea, huh? Did those men have anything to do with this? What? Your nightmare. Something I hoped I'd forgot. That job you used to do? I told you, it was a hundred years ago. Tell me about it. A long time ago, I worked for the government. In Washington, then I was transferred to London. Well, a civil servant? Sort of. People were troublesome, I was sent to take care of them. Make sure they cause no more trouble. The head of the department was a man named Max. He was the one that sent me out on the jobs. To beat them up, things like that? Things like that. You killed, too. In your sleep, you talked about shooting. I killed, too. But you didn't want to. No, I didn't want to. Some of the people needed to be killed. I didn't mind those too much. But then I had to kill someone who didn't need or deserve to be killed. But Max had given an order and I did as I was told. I was like that in those days. Then I told Max what he could do with his job and I quit. Just like that? He tried to talk me out of it, but Max hates to see people leave his service. But I left anyway. Did he cause you any trouble? No more than I could handle. Now you're working for him again. What makes you say that? Those men were here yesterday searching. They were from this, Max, weren't they? They must have been. But I don't work for him. Not now, not ever again. It's just that Max thinks I've got something he wants. The notebook. The notebook. Well, do you have it? No. But it was better I didn't tell Max that. Well, do you know where it is? I'm not sure. A long time ago, I was married to a lady of deceitful ways. From time to time, she would receive indiscreet letters she would hide in a secret place. Which you knew about, of course. Of course. Is that where the notebook is? That's what I'm going to find out.
Where is it? Where's what? Where is it? In my jacket. Thank you. The wrong book. I'm lying. Up. Turn the water up. In there. you look. I am. Believe me, I am. Where is it? I mailed it. Registered. To whom? To myself. Here? That's right. What time's the first post? 8.30. You wait. You used to be quite a big wheel. Not for a long time now. I heard you hadn't the stomach for it. Something like that? People who work for Max are all the same. Big wheels until the going gets a little rough and then you quit. We all make mistakes. Not me. Depends on who you work for. For all the good it would do you, I could tell you. But I won't. Die ignorant, die happy. I take it it isn't Max. 
I wouldn't work for Max if my life depended on it. <laughs> it usually did. That's one of the reasons I quit. What's the time? 8.30. What happens when the postman comes? He ring me on the outside bell and tell me on the security phone he's got a registered letter for me. Fine. Tell him you've got a bad leg or something. Get him to bring it out. What happens afterwards? You have been away a long time. Please. I can't get down. Tell me why, Gus. Yeah. You play it cool. I'll play it icy. Sign here, Mr. Smith. You might have given me a gun that didn't fire as soon as I twitched. I only meant to cloud it. Sorry. Is he dead? <laughs> Probably killed the family next door, too. Ah, Max here. Send the clean-up squad to Smith's apartment. Here's number four. you've just disposed of the only witness who could get you off the Dunning murder. I'm sorry. It won't happen again. If you knew Alworthy was here, why didn't you come sooner? I didn't know he was here. I merely assumed that you'd uh, receive a registered package this morning. So I waylaid the postman. But uh, when you said you couldn't come down, I thought I'd save him the climb. Very considerate. Now, this came from Alworthy's pocket. I assume they're both phonies. You assume correctly. I also assume that uh, you have the real notebook somewhere. Again, you assume correctly. Can we go fetch it, old man? No, old man, we can't. You'll get the notebook when I'm good and ready to give it to you. Now, don't push your luck. Inspector Diamond would just love to get his hands on you. But he won't as long as I have the notebook. Would you hand me that towel? You're not thinking of going into business on your own, I hope. I might. Don't. If I don't, it won't be because you say so. Hmm. Yes, I'll send a plaster along to fix this. This might even have to redecorate it. Going to bed, are you? Was up all night holding hands with all with him. Oh, well, you wouldn't like to discuss this whole business before dropping off to sleep, would you? You're panning, Max. What's in the book that's got you so hot around the collar? Well, I can't tell you that. It's just that I've got to get it back. Dunning know its value? Oh, Dunning compiled it. He was going to give it to the Chinese. All with him? He was going to sell it to them. That sounds more practical. 
What's the going rate? Oh, it's a fluctuating market. Something worth a lot of money today is worth nothing tomorrow. Today's price? To the Chinese, 50,000 pounds. <laughs> That's a lot of money. A commodity only acquires a value when one knows where the market is. I know. I made contact with you? You have. Are you offering to sell it to me? Mm-hmm. Half price. With that much money, I could take a trip where I didn't have to worry whether you'd turn me back to Inspector Diamond. Oh, I wouldn't do that, John. I gave you my word. <laughs> well, uh, exactly what do you want? 25,000 pounds. And your solemn promise that the murder business stays as it is with me off the hook. Agreed. Well, I'll trust you to make the arrangements. Max, you can trust me as much as I trust you. Well, Miss Roberts, I want you to come around to my flat. I have an errand for you. No, it won't take long. I want you to deliver something to an old friend of mine. Yes, it's important. I want to see just how good a friend he is. Good afternoon, Inspector. Hello, son. I was half expecting you. What a blasted fool thing to do! Have you any idea how difficult it's going to be to get you out this time? That's your problem. You got me in. I'm liable to get the axe for this. <laughs> That's the best news I've heard all week. All right, all right. We'll arrange a transfer in Switzerland. France. A notebook from you, 25,000 from us. 50,000. But you agreed 25. You agreed not to set the police on to me again. We both made a mistake. Very well. Let me have the details. Monsieur. Mr. Gossip, Claire. Mr. Father Key. Mr. Smith. Attendez. Merci. Plus doucement, hein? Je te dis, plus lentement. Euh, ici, plus bas. Là? Oui. Il y a quelqu'un en bas. Qui? Je vous attends. Qui? Oh, Monsieur Smith. Ah, je viens tout de suite. Toi, tu continues, hein? Oui. Euh, tu comprends ce que je viens de dire, hein? Oui. Une meilleure ligne. Johnny, you old villain. Ça va. Ça va. And you? Fine. You look terrible. You're out of condition, huh? I'm older. Mm. And wiser. Just older. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be expecting you sooner. Come. Hello. I thought you had uh, given up this cloak and dagger business. I did, five years ago. Huh? Why do you send me this? Two reasons. One, to keep anybody else from getting it. Two, so you could break the code for it. It's like the old days for a short time. Secrecy, codes, mysterious packages in the mails. I became nostalgic. Don't. You're better off. Probably. This was a very difficult code at first because it was very simple. There was no keyword. It took me three days to realize that, and afterwards, it was still difficult. You see, each group had R. Did you break it? Of course. Why else did you send it to me? What is it? 
You were not interested in the details of how I broke it? Very interested, but I haven't got the time. The first word appeared to be for me. But this made no sense with what followed. You could have saved me a lot of trouble if you told me there was a Chinese involvement. I didn't know it myself when I sent it to you. Well, as soon as I realized that it was easy, the word is not homing, but... Ho, Ming, you see, a name. It was followed by an address. And then a small piece of information about that man. What kind of information? He is a senior clerk in the Foreign Bureau in Peking. There are 15 such names and addresses, all in China. Can you tell me what it means? I have a nasty feeling it means someone's got hold of the names of all the Western agents in China. There is dangerous information to have around. Dangerous for everyone, for me and for the 15 names. No wonder Max wants it. Then you must see that it does not fall into the wrong hands. My friend, I intend to do just that. Merci. You want to count it? Just say it. I'll go get it. What's that? Max wouldn't be very happy if you took that back to him. You're a careful one. I'm a live one.
just to your left hand. Why is it I can't seem to get rid of that slice? Well, could be that you're uh, bending your left wrist. Oh, could it be that? Mm, could be. It's a pleasure to see you again. Again? I'm sorry, we never met. But I used to follow your career with interest. Join me? You don't look Chinese. Albanian, though I spend a great deal of time in China, of course. My name is Igor. You were a highly successful operator. We couldn't understand it when you dropped out of sight. Six years ago, wasn't it? Five. We thought you had gone underground. You had us worried for a time, but then we located you, we realized what had happened. Oh? What? Disillusionment. Occupational hazard of our profession. We look beneath the flag-waving, patriotic slogans, what do we find? We find we're in the dirtiest business of them all, doing nasty little jobs for very little money. Tell me, why did you decide to come back into the business? You know why. Financial independence. Yes, I'd have done the same thing in your place. The question is, where do we go from here? You're paying the piper. You are the seller in a seller's market. That's always a strong position. The strongest. I am one of the buyers for what you have to sell. The other is your man, Mac. He's not my man. Your country's man. Now, he's willing to give you 50,000 pounds. I'll be more generous. I'll give you 75,000. <laughs> That's not being more generous. You got 50,000 of it from Max. Yeah, but I, but I do have it, and I'm prepared to add 25,000 more. Your Max would have been very angry if we hadn't interrupted your transaction. I doubt if he's over-delighted about it now. Hijacking, he could understand. But to give you money and then find you cheated him. I presume you intended to contact us eventually. Of course. Of course. But before I give you the money, I want to be absolutely sure that I'm buying the genuine thing. If I allow you to open the merchandise and check its authenticity, there'll be no need for you to give me the money. Then we must devise a scheme where both our interests are guaranteed. What do you suggest? A rendezvous. I come alone with the money, you come alone with the notebook. It'll take me two minutes to authenticate the contents. If I'm satisfied, we can both leave together and go our separate ways. Who chooses the rendezvous? Doesn't matter, as long as we both agree. Sounds fair enough. Paris? London. Why London? I would have thought you wanted to stay well away from Max's clutches. The best way to keep out of Max's clutches is to get so close to him he can't see you. Besides, that's where the merchandise is. Very well. London. Come, I'll have you driven back to the airport. You know, it's bad enough you're sneaking off to France without telling me, but expecting me to cook for you when you get back is putting it on a bit thick. This wasn't a pleasure trip. Oh, come off it. France is always a pleasure trip. Mm -hmm. This one wasn't. Well, that's because you've forgotten how to take your pleasures. How would you like your eggs this time, sir? Over easy. And I haven't forgotten how to take my pleasures. That's why I'm here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm hungry, too. Well, at least you've got your priorities in order. <laughs> I'll get it. Hey, listen, if it's that nasty old man from downstairs, pretend you're my husband. He wants to see you. Tomorrow. You don't want to cause any trouble. Not here. Been having yourself quite a little jaunt. How much did you take them for? Go fly a kite. How much? Nothing. Marchison was a good operator. Who's Marchison? The man who was murdered at the lake. Our meeting place was blown. If the rendezvous was blown, you blew it. 
I suppose I killed Marchison, too. I wouldn't put it past you. If they had what they wanted, why were you picked up at the airport? If you knew I was picked up, why didn't you stop them? Well, if they had the notebook, what would they want with you? Perhaps they didn't like the notebook they had. They haven't got it? Right. That phony one again. Right again. You can go. You sure you're safe without your muscle? If they haven't got it, um, where is it? Safe. Oh, where did they take you after you were picked up? To play golf. The man named Igor. Igor Barat? Just Igor as far as I'm concerned. Has to be Barat. Uh, what was his, uh, proposition? You have 50,000 pounds, plus 25,000 more. Mm -hmm. You agreed, of course. I agreed. So why didn't you hand it to him before you left France? Because I found out what was in the notebook. <laughs> so? So if 15 agents in China are going to get the chop, I'm not going to wield the axe. Not even for 75,000 pounds? Not even. You think I'm going to offer you more, is that it? Well, you'd tell your mother if the price was right. Now, we made a deal. 50,000 pounds for that notebook. I came up with the money, and I'm going to get that book in exchange. I've been offered 75. I don't care if you were offered the Great Wall of China! I'm going to have you worked over, John. I'll have you worked over so hard that you'll forget how to walk. The notebook's not for sale anymore. Now, what's that supposed to mean? If you could see further than the end of your evil little snout, you'd have realized it long ago. Realized what? The notebook was my insurance against a murder charge, nothing more. You give me enough money to cover my expenses, and you know what you can do with your 50,000 pounds and the notebook. Then why go through the whole rigmarole in the first place? I wanted to see you sweat a little. You must have gone through hell to come up with 50,000 pounds out of the accounts department. You're a sadist. I had a good teacher. Very well. What exactly do you want? Like I said. Enough money to cover my expenses and a 24-hour protection until Barat decides to stop chasing me. He's not chasing you. He will be when he realizes I'm not going through with it. We can kill two birds with one stone. You get Barat over here, you get the money from him, and turn back to me my 50,000 and, uh, well, you can keep half the balance. There won't be any money unless I give him the notebook. I keep the balance. Give it to him. We'll pick him up immediately afterwards. Oh, I have a lot to talk over with Mr. Barat. It should be very interesting. It's risky. But if you don't pick him up, he'll have the notebook. Oh, we'll be sitting on his head two minutes after you've handed it over. Now, the meeting place is your choice. So I'll find a place that I can sew up so tight that no one can get out. Come on in. Help yourself to the booze. You want to get yourself a bird? I've got a bird. No, I mean a resident type bird. <laughs> I had one of those, remember? That's right. Danielle Dunning. Formerly Danielle Smith. Where do I start? The beginning. And don't make it too long. I've got a heavy day tomorrow. 
Where's Max? Don't come to strong, silent stuff with me, fellas. I invented it. Where is he? He'll be here. Good. But he doesn't want to see you until after you've contacted Berard. That's his hard luck. Tell him. Just wanted to check to see if everything was okay. Fine, fine. Now look, after the transaction, you get him to leave first. Give us five minutes and we'll have him picked up. You're all right, John, aren't you? There is one thing. Mm -hmm. I found out about Danielle yesterday. Danielle? You remember Danielle. I used to be married to her. Oh, yes, of course, and I remember now, so. She was married to Dunning, too. Yes? Until last year. Last year, she got a divorce. And it's all very fascinating, old chap, but it's hardly the time to discuss your domestic failures. Well, I'll see you out. Switch it off, Max. Now, I haven't got a license for that. Ha! Sue me. Put it away, John, let's talk. So talk. Well, you're getting yourself into trouble. I'm already in trouble. This is getting me out. With a gun? If it helps. Tell me about Danielle. What's to tell? My ex-wife was already divorced from Dunning, yet she comes to me to obtain evidence for a divorce she's already got. Why? Well, how should I know? It was a hook, Max. Why? Well, uh, would you have come in if I'd have asked you? No. That's what I thought. I wanted you in. She seemed as good a way as any to get you. What about Dunning? Well, he had the name. We had to get them from him before the Chinese. Why didn't you move in and pick up the notebook? I didn't know where it was. Dunning could have hidden it anywhere. You're lying. So I'm lying. You listen to me, Max. And when I go wrong, you tell me. Until then, you keep your big, fat mouth shut. Or I'll take your ear off. Huh? Yeah. My eye drops. Ready? Mm-hmm. I was meant to find the notebook. And everything that followed was designed to look good to the other side. You wanted Barat to think that I had something so valuable that you'd get me off a murder charge and pay me 50,000 pounds to get it back. After we arranged the rendezvous in France, you had it blown. It didn't matter to you that you were sending two of your own men to the wall. All you wanted was Barat to get the notebook there and then. And as a bonus, you hoped I'd wind up dead, too. So, you devised this salvage operation. And if you tell me you're going to pick up Barat five minutes after he gets the notebook, then I shall tell you you are a liar. Barat gets it. He was always going to get it. Your only problem has been to keep it from looking like the plant that it is. Which raises another question. What's in the notebook? Name. I know that. Whose names? Agents. Whose? Russians. Barat gets the Chinese thinking they're Western agents and they all go to the wall. Russia can't scream because she's not supposed to have any agents in China and China and Russia end up with a bigger needle than they've already got. Clever? Clever. Pity that it isn't going to work. Why not? Because I'm not selling out 15 agents. I don't care if they are Russian. You said it yourself, Max. Once an agent, always an agent. I don't meet Barat. I take the notebook away and I burn it. You can't do that. Prove it. Well, if you don't turn up, Barat will come after you. And in case he has any difficulty, John, I will help him. You see, it's a very small world. Not nearly big enough for you to hide from both of us. Now, why don't you be a good chap and stick with our original plan? 
Just remember, give him five minutes before you come out so that he can get well away. Hmm? Ciao, John. You're early. I didn't ask before to come as you did. The journey was well worth it. Wasn't it? There's nothing wrong, is there? Sorry, I'm just getting old. Old and rich. I'd like to see it. Of course. Please. Seems to be in order. You're satisfied? Seems a pity you're going out of business. Could have done some work together in the future. Would you work with 75,000 pounds? Yes, I would. <laughs> I enjoy it. Then you're a real nut. Each to his own. Perhaps we'll meet again. I doubt it.
take a look on the roof. Into the car. Hands on the wheel. Take a message to Max. Tell him not to hold his breath waiting for his grand scheme to pay off. I was expecting you yesterday. What kept you so long? Max wants to see you. I thought he might. Shall we go? He's coming here. That's good of him. I shall have to fit a new lock to that door. No. He only just got in. You're looking very elegant. Aren't I? I've uh, committed some money, didn't you know? down. If either of these thugs lay a finger on me, I'll kick up so much noise you'll hear it all the way to the House of Lords. I'm not going to hurt you, John. I'm going to kill you. Again? Before I do, though, I want some answers. I'll bet you do. You said the plan wouldn't pay off. Why? Because it won't. You told Barat. Not directly. Very well. I had a pretty good idea you'd try to double-cross me, one way or another. I admit I didn't expect you to send two of your heavy boys to chop me down. That's going at some, Max, even for you. So I decided if I'm going to be double-crossed, I'm going to do a little double-crossing myself. After our little chat out there at the airfield, when I confirmed my nasty suspicions about you, I added a small epilogue to the notebook. Say, quote, tread carefully, stranger. Unquote. What's that supposed to mean? Barat's a bright lad. It means he'll know the notebook was a plant. And your grand design falls flat on its backside where it deserves to be. Not much point in killing you, then. 
I thought you might see it that way. Well, just give me the money and we'll call it quits. Uh -uh. No money. Money, John. My expenses have gone up. Well, I'm shot at by my own side and I have to shoot people in return. I come very high. How high? 75,000 high. Bring her up. Bring who up? I had her picked up first. I thought we'd uh, bring her up for quiet to talk. You would, too. You know me, John. Private room, if you wish, sir. No, thanks. Oh, yes. I promised you something for expenses, didn't I? Fifty shillings. From then on, you're on your own. The last of the great spenders. A uh, gentleman left this for you, sir. Where? He's gone, sir. He came in just after you did and left as soon as he'd given me the envelope. Thank you. With many thanks from the stranger who tried carefully. What does it mean? It means I've come into money. You can order a la carte. Waiter! What are you up to? You, as soon as you're drunk enough. Waiter! The wine list. 